There is an artist in almost everybody. And I think being an artist is as much a choice as it is something that you're born with. It's a choice to work at it every day. You have to wake up and say, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna do things. I'm gonna struggle against all this resistance, whether it's the job that's preventing you from doing it or the, the turmoil in your life that's affecting the way you think. You make the choice to push it all aside and focus on your craft and make your, your dreams a reality. My name is Ian Cinco. I am an artist and filmmaker out of Brooklyn, New York. I grew up on Long Island, the old uh, Strong Island as they call it. I moved to Brooklyn in 2000 and really just fell in love with the art and culture here. And every, every year it's just like a constant expansion of just the communities and there's something about the culture in Brooklyn that just keeps me coming back and I don't wanna leave. I consider myself to be a cartoonist I think people are kind of surprised by that. People think of me as being many different things, but the thing that originally got me into art in the first place was cartooning. I loved uh, Calvin and Hobbes, a lot of newspaper cartoons when I was growing up. And then as I kept growing up, I kept finding more and more mature comics and animations and movies and anything to do with epic storytelling. I make a pretty wide range of art. These days I'm focused on a cyberpunk comic series that I started called Neon Spring. I also have an art book series called Erratica. It's a made up word, it combines the word erotic with erratic. Because my daily practice is pretty erratic, I'll just wake up and kind of make whatever I feel like that day. That's kind of my favorite thing to do. That's what I prefer to do. Neon Spring is my cyberpunk sci-fi graphic novel series. Only one issue is out right now. I'm currently writing like the first big story arc. In all honesty, what inspired it was LA traffic being shitty, and I made a joke about a driverless car that lobotomizes people. And it was just a joke, and for some reason it sat with me and I kept thinking about it. I kind of got obsessed with it. And the more I thought about it, I started thinking about characters in this world where this car exists. So that's what the first issue is. It's about a driverless car that lobotomizes people. It takes their brain out and it puts a mechanical brain in, so they're essentially controlled by the central unit called Mother. I hope that when people read Neon Spring, they take away the fact that we might be sowing the seeds of our own irrelevance with technology, but I do hope that, that maybe we'll evolve with the technology. Maybe the technology will somehow respect us when it becomes sentient. But I also have, a, I think, a more nuanced view of where technology could go throughout the story. It's not just doom and gloom. There, there are sort of moments where humans and technology get along. That's part of what I hope people take away from it. Ultimately, I want people to be really just entertained. One of the best things about getting in touch with the artist that, that is within me and bringing it out into the world is that I, I meet a ton of other artists. There's this giant artist community in New York that's just exploding right now. I have a, a dual show with my homie Adrian Bermio. We're literally just painting on the same canvases together. But working with Bermio has been great because it's freeing me up and I'm being more expressive. We're making abstract pieces together. Just being out on the scene, I ran into another guy named Bird. He invited me to be a part of his Fashion Week event. Every year Fashion Week comes around, I miss out on it. I just don't have anything planned. So last year I remember thinking like, I really kind of want to put my character Zuzu, like I want to put her in someone's fashion somehow. Bring an idea to life in a garment and then see that garment on a character and then see somebody else's uh, perspective on it, I think is really dope. I like how it's worlds crossing over, like the fashion world crossing over with my comic world. I'm calling it the year of collaboration because that seems to be the trend right now. Everybody's mixing their, their art together. I like playing with surreal motifs in my art. I think I draw from something that's sort of like deeply unconscious most of the time. I don't really even know where some of the ideas come from. They just kind of spring into my mind. There's something about really raw things, raw, surreal, weird, bizarre twisted, even sometimes disturbing things that kind of inspires me, but it just interests me. No matter what mood I'm in, no matter how happy or depressed or no matter what's going on, I wake up and I just make things. Even if I'm feeling absolutely terrible, I'll, I'll still just make my art. And I know that a lot of people struggle with that. They let the world around them bring them down and, and, and stop them from doing what they want to do. I think the thing that 
that I really want people to take away from it is just inspiration. Like I, I want people's imaginations to be like wildly tickled. I want people to see my work and just think, not only is anything possible, but I could do it too if I focus on it.